no solo estamos protegiendo Galápagos para los galapagueños, sino para el resto del Pacífico y, como ustedes saben, para el mundo. Comparison to Florida, where I'd also dive recreationally, there's so much life here. There's so many sharks, and everything looks so healthy. So these are from some cruises we've heard from large. We have large areas. Those species, they don't recognize, they don't understand political boundaries, so they're going to be moving between different territories and that's when they're most at risk. Particularly the things like industrial fishing and bycatch and, uh, and other activities. So if we can't protect one area like Galapagos, together with other areas like Cockles and the areas, the key kind of corridors that connect those areas between them, then one particular area on its own isn't able to function properly. Está prohibida la pesca, pero fuera de la reserva y fuera de las 200 millas hay flotas eh, pesqueras bastante grandes, de más de 300 embarcaciones, que están capturando tiburones para, para exportarlos a países asiáticos. Nosotros no vivimos netamente de la pesca, vivimos del turismo. Nosotros nos, nos vale más eh, las especies vivas nadando libremente en, este, en el agua que en un plato servido en una mesa. taking water samples, we've been putting grubs in the water which show the different kinds of marine life that is swimming around these islands. And then we've been taking a, an ROV robot down to the seabed so we can see all the unique corals and different habitats there are. Necesitamos que por lo menos 60 gobiernos lo ratifiquen para que en esa conferencia de la ONU que se llevará a cabo en Francia en junio del 2025 se pueda ratificar y entrar en vigor. Al mismo tiempo, sabemos que no podemos esperar. Tenemos la meta de que el 30% de los océanos sean protegidos para el 2030.